All right. Hey, welcome to this episode of Blockchain Speaks. Yes, this is what it's all about. We are this well, this is a this is a good day because if you're out there in listen land, then you might be wondering why is there audio on a video channel? Because I'm testing out something new today. If you know anything about the audio and video that I've done in the past, you know that podcast doesn't necessarily mean audio anymore, uh, but podcasts are audio with a YouTube video or something of those sorts. And so I'm thinking, okay, let's take this thing back. Uh, there's something called Clubhouse nowadays that it's all the rave. Um, to me, it's like a podcast or um, you know, Instagram, Twitter, I don't know, a beeper uh, on steroids with a lot of promotion. I don't see the point. But what I want to do today is I want to I take you down this path. Blockchain speaks. This is that first series in a series of talks really focused on blockchain and Bitcoin. You know, we're going to talk about mining. We're going to kick it off with mining, actually. But I want to talk about different areas or variations of blockchain and Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies. Um, because obviously Ethereum is definitely one of the most powerful projects out there uh, on the blockchain. And when we talk about Bitcoin, we talk about cryptocurrency, if we talk about blockchain in general, we can't leave out the, the second most popular you know, blockchain project uh, in, in history, which is Ethereum. And, and when we're talking about the ones that have access to develop DAOs and, and access to create uh, some type of utility, uh, some type of defense finance or decentralized finance uh, or, you know, kind of connect to the Internet of Things and, and 5G, 6G and beyond, then we know that we go gone well beyond uh, blockchain only in the Bitcoin world. But we're reaching over into, you know, ADA, uh, Cardano, we're reaching into Tron, we're reaching into Neo, we're reaching, you know, into Z Zulika, we're reaching uh, into the most popular, which is Ethereum. So today, though, um, I want to hit on Bitcoin mining profits. I read something about Bitcoin mining profits, and I thought that this would be a good topic to to bring about today. So let me let me just go through this article that I that I saw today and let's uh, let's read it together. Let's see if it's impressive to you as it is to me. So Glassnode. Glassnode says that Bitcoin mining profits hit its new all time high. And just because of that topic, it kind of got me to thinking because three months ago I was looking for a way to uh, diversify my investments and I knew mining was profitable at one time. But over the last two two years or so, up till 2020, mining wasn't profitable. I mean, people were literally going bankrupt, like miners going bankrupt. Kind of weird, ain't it? Um, because they had bought all this equipment in in pursuit of the the the, the fifty thousand dollar Bitcoin, you know, uh, uh, reward, which that wasn't happening because Bitcoin didn't even come close to that in the last two years. And so we thought across the kind of crypto enthusiast world that what is Bitcoin going to do? Is it going to go up? Is it going to go down? Is it going to disappear? Is it going to come back? Nobody really knew what was going to happen. Therefore, we all kind of let it go and we focused on altcoins and maybe looking into how we could benefit from these other up and coming altcoins that were filling this void uh, that Bitcoin left. And so Bitcoin lay dormant for about two years. Um, Ethereum had dropped down to about $300 per coin, per Ether or whatever. And so, yeah, you know, when, when Bitcoin hits 1200 or 2000 even down to 4000 you know, even in 2020, it got down to about $4,000. You know, it just wasn't profitable for anybody. And, and so when you compare that to late 2017, Bitcoin hitting 20000 and then in 2020, it drops down to 4,000. This happened back 2009, 2013. 
it went up and it dropped down drastically and people just cried out, ah, we told you so. And that's what you're always going to get. Uh, you got this segment of society that wants to be miserable and they want to see something fail and they want to say that they knew it was going to fail. And so this self-fulfilling you know, fulfilling prophecy creeps up and makes them believe that they have succeeded in their failure, which is you know, an odd thing, but some people enjoy that kind of thing. But others understand the risks. Others understand that this is the long game. And when you understand the long game, if you purchase Ethereum when it was $300 or $400 because it went from $20,000 down to $1,200, down to $3,000, maybe $4,000, then you could see what they couldn't see. Therefore, mining today is at its all-time high. You know, Glassno, which is a big reporting agency, uh, they do a lot of good, 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 good journalism for, for the cryptocurrency world and blockchain, has revealed uh, in its last weekly newsletter, uh, March 15th time frame, that Bitcoin miners' daily revenue surged to an all-time high of $52.3 million, just as the price of the world's flagship cryptocurrency touched upon $61,000 per Bitcoin for the first time in, in, in history of the Bitcoin, right? And that happened this past weekend. So miners are now, after two years of this drought, now they are making crazy, crazy profits. Unlike in proof of stake, like with Ethereum, based cryptocurrencies where holders stake their coins to secure the network, the task of securing proof of work, which is like a Bitcoin network or blockchain, powered blockchains such as Bitcoin, uh, this is carried out by miners who invest in the expensive hardware like the SHA-256 and the Perry, all of these particular like servers, uh, if you will. And they pay this high fee for electricity to get the job done of mining and looking for that gold rush, right? To be that one, to get that reward. And that block reward is six Bitcoins. So think about that for a second. When the price is around fifty to $60,000 per Bitcoin, now you understand the gold rush. According to Glassnode's week 11 on-chain newsletter, the la latest surge in the price of Bitcoin has had a positive effect on miners of the digital currency as their daily income has now reached an all-time high of $52.3 million. The report notes that the surge in miner income is an exciting and positive development for the Bitcoin ecosystem as it incentivizes miners to keep doing what they know how to do best therefore strengthening Bitcoin security. So this is a very positive thing because miners play an essential role in the development and the mainstreaming adoption of Bitcoin. And, and, and that's for another topic, but it is a really, really interesting dynamic when you look at the role that uh, the miners play, which is somebody that could be literally in a basement with five or six you know, Shaw 256 uh, uh, servers running those things full time and producing, let's say they only get one block reward in a week. Guess what that equals to? 6.25 Bitcoin a week. <laughs> if you only got it, but you got to have a lot, of, a lot of computing power to do that. So Bitcoin adoption, they go on to say, it's fueling the price. Interesting, isn't it? Correlation there. It will be recalled that the Bitcoin network experienced the third halving event in its 12-year-old history in May 2020, slashing minor rewards from 12.5 Bitcoin to a mere 6.25 Bitcoin per block. Glassnode notes that since that time, aggregate minor revenue, including transaction fees and block subsidies, has stayed around 1,000 Bitcoin per day. These are the massive miners. These are the miners that are way up there in... Norway and, and Siberia or wherever in the cold areas that can mine that kind of that kind of amount per day. So they say in the post having number three era, aggregate miner income has typically been around 1,000 Bitcoin per day, comprising the block subsidy and transaction fees, which have consistently fluctuated between 75 and 125 Bitcoin per day. That's what the firm reported. So just as Bitcoin miners are now smiling to the bank. The Bitcoin price bull run since last year 
has also brought good tightness to both retail and institutional holders of the digital gold. As a recent report by Glassnode shows that 98% of Bitcoin wallet addresses are already in profit. Hmm, wow. Even with Bitcoin's impressive milestones so far, it appears the revolution is just beginning as more and more entities are now adopting Bitcoin. Boom, that's what's up, right? So as pre at press time, the Bitcoin price is hovering around 55, 56,000 with a market cap of $1.03 trillion as seen on coin market cap. So that's the kind of information that it, it just, I mean, it has to help you understand the power and the, the mainstay that Bitcoin has, has created for itself. Because if Bitcoin was just a fad or if it's just something that was coming and going, then you wouldn't see this happening. You know, so, so when people are not understanding the magnitude, the power of Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, blockchain technology in this space and time, then you're, you're totally not, not living in this time because you cannot be alive and not understand that you are missing out on this revolutionary evolution of currency. And that equates to wealth. If you, if you don't see the connection between currency evolution and wealth generation, you, you gotta understand that this, there's, there's a gap that happened. And we're still in that gap right now. And you're still in a decision phase. And so we're in this gap, right? Because we've been in the go all the way back to barter system and agricultural and trading stock uh, as far as stock. It's funny how stock has become bear bonds and, and pieces of paper or digital, digital paper, so to speak, and, and, and ownership of a company, whereas stock also means cows, horses, pigs, so on and so forth, you know, actual animal, animals, domesticated animals that you would have as stock, right? And so before there was this digital aspect of it, people traded stock. They traded their animals. They traded their goods. They traded their stock for other valuable items. So you could trade a pig or a few pigs for maybe some tools. You maybe had cows, stock, that you traded for wheat. So think about that for a second. So we went from that and a lot of us missed out on that. A lot of us maybe were actually doing the actual negotiation or doing the actual trading of the item, not the ones with the funding or the money. We weren't the owners of it. We were just the facilitators of that deal. And so we saw all this happening, but we weren't allowed to get in the game. And so when you look at all the years that passed by, you have, you know, three fourths of the world in the game, building their wealth. And then you have another one fourth that has, I don't know, 400 years behind the other group of people. And they have the ability, they have the knowledge, they have the actual know-how, but they don't have the resources to get in the game. So somewhere down the road, 2009, somebody creates an opening. They create an opening in the financial market and says, when I open this up, all of you that's been disenfranchised, unbanked, underbanked, right? That's been on the sidelines, that's been pushed out. Hmm. I've created a gap that you can step in. And instead of watching funds go by, you actually get to grab some of those funds. And Bitcoin was the avenue for that to happen. So blockchain created a gap in the financial market for those disenfranchised to get in the game and actually take market share of the financial wealth that's been created and going to be created. But a lot of us are still standing on the sidelines, hoping and wishing and waiting for a government stimulus check to keep us in their game instead of us taking control of our own destiny. So I would say this, because I don't want to go on and on and on. This is coming up on my 15 minute of fame. Um, yes, I'm going to plug this into your ear right now. Get in the game. Blockchain is here. Blockchain is making moves in every industry. 
you have blockchain technology that is revolutionizing funding, finance, art, non-fungible tokens. There are so many movements going on. It'll just blow your mind. So I welcome you to join me in another episode of Blockchain Speaks very soon. This is the kickoff. This is the first one, but it won't be the last one. I'm Rashid Hill. I'll be your host every single time Blockchain Speaks. Visit my website, visit my blog, visit my channel, and you won't miss a thing. All right? Peace until the block train runs again. Thank you.